What's going on my Weltu family? And welcome back. Today's lesson is gonna be TIG Welding 101, Walk in the Cup. Let's get to it. All right guys, before we start on the plate, I want you to get a concept of how to walk the cup, okay? Now, right here I have a 12 inch pipe, schedule 40, but I'm imagining myself that it's a 300 pound barrel or a 200 pound barrel, okay? There's no way for me to move it across the floor except rolling it. I can't carry it, I can't slide it, there's just no way. So the only way to move it forward is to move it side to side, okay? Walking the cup is not as hard as it seems, okay? You're moving it side to side, it's walking on its own. Imagine yourself, you have to have an imagination when it comes to this, it will help you out, all right? All righty guys. Now, let's try it on some plate. So now we have a flat piece of plate here, okay? I drew me some guidelines so we can make sure we have a straight, consistent bead all the way around when we walk the cup. Um, the tungsten, the tungsten that we're using is a 2% lanthanated tungsten. Always have a sharp tungsten when you're walking the cup, okay? Your puddle comes out way, way better. Also, you want your tungsten to be about a quarter of inch, quarter of an inch out okay um, it can be from an eighth to a quarter in it, a quarter of an inch it's all personal preference okay but I like it sticking out that much now when we walk the cup we walk the cup from here a lot of people get weirded out they think it's from right here but no it's from here okay put the cup right here now imagine yourself as a mini you holding the barrel that we did on the clip and you're moving it across the floor, okay? You're moving it across the floor, side to side, taking your time. Your wrist, it always stays light, okay? No tension on your wrist at all. If you have tension on there, this is what happens. You slip, you don't want that. So what you do is, you keep it light on the wrist. It's all on the wrist. It's not on your shoulder or your elbow. It's all in the wrist. But like I said, you have to have an imagination when you're doing this. It helps you out. Like right now, I'm thinking of myself as the mini me moving this barrel across the floor. Okay? Just like that. Pausing on each line. Just going like this. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add it with an ER70S2 1 8 filler wire, okay? And when I do that, I'm gonna leave the filler wire right in the middle of the puddle and I'm gonna burn it, still walking the cup, I'm gonna burn it the whole way. I'm not moving the rod back, I'm keeping it there, leaving it there and just burning that rod from corner to corner but leaving the rod in the middle of the puddle, okay? Watching that puddle hit each line. All right, now let's try it out. All righty guys, so I'm running at 175 amps for walking the cup, okay? We're using a Miller XMT 304 for our machine. Make sure you always have a sharp tungsten, okay? You see how my filler rod is right in the middle. It might look like I'm pushing it back every time that I'm walking it, but I'm not. It's just laying on there, okay? It's just melting it away. Like I said, guys, walking a cup is not as hard as it seems. You know, when you first try it, your hand gets uncomfortable, like, you can see it in your head how to do it, but when it when your hand actually tries to do it, it's uh, it doesn't want to. It feels like it's numb, you know. I understand that. So, a, a good habit for y'all to do as well is get you a um, a tick torch, a flex head tick torch, just the torch itself, and walk it around anything that you see that's flat, horizontal, vertical, or overhead. That will help you out a lot as well. So 
you might have a barbecue pit in the backyard, okay, and it's round, so you can practice walking a cup on that. You might have a, um, you know, just having, I guess just having imagination, guys, you know, just anything that you see, it can be a fillet weld, you know, it can be a pipe, it can be whatever you think that's going to help you all out, just walk it around anything that you see. Walk it on the floor, walk it on the walls, you know, on the walls is good. If you do that about 35 minutes a day, just walking it, and when you actually start welding, then it's going to become muscle memory in your hand, and it's not going to be hard for you anymore, okay? You're not going to overthink it so much. Because that's the main thing. That's why y'all struggle, especially for the beginner starting to walk the cup. That's why you struggle because you overthink so much because it's doing like a loop. It's turning. It's walking, and you don't really know what to do. Y'all force it forward when really walking the cup is moving on its own, okay? That's something y'all keep in consideration. Just get y'all a TIG torch and walk it on anything that you see that's flat, horizontal, vertical, or overhead. And it will help y'all out tons, okay? At least 35 minutes a day, at least. That's what, that's what I did when I first started, started off. Keep your filler wire too about a 10 degree angle, 20 degree angle. As well, don't keep it flat like that. Always at an angle, okay? There, that's the first bead. I think it came out it came out pretty slick, so that's all consistencies. The guideline right there is to make sure I'm consistent, you know? Always have a guideline for yourself. All right, guys, now that I got the first uh, bead, it's very important to know how to stack your beads as well, okay? Especially when you get to pipe, or plate, stacking your beads is important. You always want it 50-50. So on the next arc shot, we're gonna get is 50-50. So my rod is gonna be right here, right on this line where the, the weld ends. And I'm gonna go from here to the middle of the weld. Here to the middle of the weld. The rod is still in the middle of the puddle the whole time. All right, guys? Just like that, right to the middle. Right to the middle, okay? Right to the middle. Very consistent the whole way. Don't overlap it too much. Right in the middle, okay? Let's try it out, guys, all right? This is important, very important. All right, so now, now what we're doing is we're making the welds 50-50, okay? Very, very important to know how to uh, stack your beads when it comes to hilly arc or stick or whatever that you do because when it comes to pipe and you actually have to do a two to three bead cap you want to be able to stack it nicely okay so you always remember that And also, there's different types of walking the cup, too. I mean, you can walk the cup like I did it right now, just having it flat right there and walking it. Or you can walk it and having the tick torch upside down. Or you can have it sideways. There's different types of ways to walk the cup, but you got to find what's more comfortable for you, okay? Find what's more comfortable. Y'all see the angle of my rod? about a 30, 20 degree angle on it. Y'all see how I'm not pushing no rod. I'm not moving it back or anything. I'm just leaving it there, just laying it there. On my gauge for the Argon, I have it around 35 PSI. Yeah, around 35 PSI. Between 30 and 35 is good, okay, on the gauge. Some good argon flow. One thing about me is that I always like to keep a sharp tungsten, okay? Any of my students that if you ask and you ever join our facility, our school, our academy, 
I'm very strict with coming with sharp tungstens because that can make you or break you as far as making your beads consistently and making that puddle form consistently. If I hit my tungsten one time, just stick it on there, I sharpen it again. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of guys like to hit the tungsten and keep going and keep going. And uh, I don't like that. I like to keep, always keep a sharp tungsten. Take y'all's time, okay? There's no rush to walk in the cup. Take your time. Watch that puddle. These are very good arc shots right here, so y'all can see exactly what I'm doing. And um, just flow with it, and y'all get it, man. Just keep practicing every single day. Alrighty, guys. Now uh, I showed y'all, you know, the the walk in the cup. Now there's three different types of weaves you're gonna see in the field, and also it's gonna be your personal preference as far as your style on walking the cup. Here's number one, which is kind of like a butterfly effect. You know, a, a lot of um, new students, uh, they start off like this and they don't change it. That's just the way they like it. They like this style, you know, more like big, big um, side to side motions right here. Okay, it makes that butterfly effect. And there's no problem with that at all. You know, it's all your style. That's all it is. Okay. And then there's also the tight weaves, which we did here on the, uh, on the walk in the cup one. Um, this one you're going to see in the field too. This one's just a little bit more tighter than the butterfly effect. Just like this, a little bit more tighter. It's all about style guys. You know, it's all about style. And then there's three, which is super tight. Now this is my personal favorite. This is, like I said, my personal, okay? Super tight, you know, when you're just doing this, like this. Just going side to side, real, real tight. You're still walking the cup and everything, but it, but um, you're just going super tight, side to side. Tungsten's going side to side, real tight, real tight, real tight, just like that, you know? Um, like I said, it's all personal preference, guys. So there's the butterfly effect, um, tight, and then there's super tight. You're going to pick a favorite. That's just what it is. You know, I started off with these, then I liked doing these, and there was one day I liked it tight, you know, super tight. So it's all personal preference, but once you start working out there and, and, and walking the cup and seeing your style, you know, stick to one. But uh, you can also play with all three, too, as well, so. All righty, guys, those, that's it. Take Welding 101, walk in the cup. I really hope this helped you out, and if it did, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel down low. All right? Burn, learn, and eventually, y'all going to earn. Y'all have a good one.